Tonight, the National Democratic Congress holds firm its position not to sign a peace pact ahead of the elections, telling the Peace Council, quote, we don't accept your plea to let bygones be bygones. The party's chairman, John Sansir Nketia, insists there is no need to commit to any document that is lesser than the law. The party took the stance at a meeting with the National Peace Council a while ago. More of that shortly, but first, listen to the member of the Peace Council, Maovi Bin Salem, pleading to the NDC to cooperate with them ahead of the elections. We don't have any Apart from the fact that we have come, come to the court, court your, your brotherliness, your friendship, your, your patriotic, patriotic you know, credentials, and uh, what not. not. So, so that, that we, we, we collectively, we put our acts together and uh, ensure and try to see that this country doesn't continue sinking as it is. Any Ghanaian who, 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 who is correct up here, excuse me to say, who cannot have the audacity to say that Ghana is not sinking. We see it, we feel it. But then who caused it? Did it start today? Was it just yesterday that it started? But if we should go back to dwell only on those ones, we'll be neglecting the way forward, the forward march, which will lead us to the progressive Ghana, a peaceful Ghana. As we said today, even with all the challenges that we have now, our neighbors in West Africa here, throughout Africa, they still see Ghana as, as a, a, a safe a, a, a haven. And they would wish they had a, a country like Ghana and had people like Ghanaians, had political parties like Ghanaian political parties, political party leadership just like the Ghanaian political party leadership. Those are their wishes. Unfortunately, they don't have it. So they envy us. So in a nutshell, when the chairman picked the double, <laughs> I thought he was, <laughs> was going to signal me that I'm talking too much and I must end it here. So really, we've come with open hearts to tell you that we are prepared to accept whatever shortcomings that you have seen in us. We are also prepared to receive your pieces of advice. And God willing, we would not be coming to verbally convince you that yes, we have listened and then we are doing the best that we can, but we believe that practically you will see it manifest and manifested clean and clearly for each and every one of us to see. But for now, our plea is let us let bygone be bygone. Not that we forget it. No sensible person can forget his past. Because the past can always guide us as we move ahead. But we can shelve it. Would you hope that, yes, we would be able to do better? We have what it takes to do much better than we are doing now. And that must be collaborative. We're looking at a situation where will this friendship, brotherly, sisterly atmosphere that we have with the functional members, committee members of the National Democratic Council, we're looking forward to to meeting the NPP the same way, but rather looking forward to being a bigger platform in which the NDC and NPP functional committee members would be able to meet and with us present, and uh, so that we 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 we, we ponder over uh, uh, issues that concern our country. Well, so that is the uh, Peace Council's uh, spokesperson today at this particular meeting, uh, Malvi Bin Sali, pleading uh, with the NDC to let bygones be bygones. Well, we heard from the chairman of the NDC, John Sassoud Nketiah, who laid down six conditions, including getting the president, the IGP, the chief justice, and the AG to all sign the document. Now, listen to your speech. But we don't accept the fact that <laughs> we should let bygones be bygones. Because crime has no expiry date. The people who have been killed and maimed are people's fathers, breadwinners, sisters. And so on. And the cases are life. People are calling.
for justice. And they are blaming us for restraining them not to fight back in self-defense. Because we believe in peace, it's a political party, and when those things were happening, we restrained our people with the hope that the law would take its course. We have learned bitterly that for the past five years, the law has not taken its course. So there is no need to commit to any document that is lesser than even the law itself. So, but we are all interested in peace. This is the only country we have. Yeah. And we always pride ourselves as being the midwives of the 1992 democracy, the Fourth Republican Democracy. There are people here who participated in writing the Constitution. There are people here who participated in the transitional processes from military rule to constitutional democracy. And we are the last people to, to, to expect that anything will happen to blow up our democracy because our grandchildren will have history to write and pride themselves that, oh, my grandfather has his signature in the, in the, in the constitution as a, as a constitutional father. And we believe that that history must not be lost. The history must still remain that we created the 1992 Constitution that paved the way for a return to multi-party democracy. But we cannot sign to conditions which, in our honest belief, will not contribute to the sustenance of that democracy. If things are happening which we feel will undermine that constitution, we cannot be part of it. If we are sent to it, it means that we will be guilty of participating in the disruption of our democracy. That is why we are speaking up to let the wrongs be corrected so that the democracy can be saved. And so we believe that Ayahuasca was what going to happen. There was a commission. There were recommendations. The recommendations have not been implemented so far. Condition number one is that let us see full implementation of the recommendations of Ayahuasca West Wogon Commission of Inquiry, which was established by His Excellency Nana Dudankwa Kufuadu himself. And we believe that he trusted in the judgment of the commissioners. That is how come some of them have proceeded to be Supreme Court judges. Number two, we want to see initiation of prosecution in respect of the perpetrators of the killings in Techiman Saf, Ablikuma Centra, Banda, and Ododododio. We want to see prosecution initiated in respect of the illegal printing and handling of several, I mean, about one million extra ballot papers that were intercepted and were destroyed by the police. 
in our presence and the records were taken, we don't see what the Ghana Police Service has been waiting for all these years. And even at some point, there was an orchestration to even, uh, uh, I mean, lie on us that we rather are guilty of that crime. And so we officially sent our lawyers to report to the IGP that we are interested in that case. It must be investigated and then prosecutions done when found necessary. We have not heard anything about it. We want action on it now. Otherwise, the next election, the same people can go and, and now print more than two million. Number four, there is an active case of missing IT equipment from the warehouses of the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission has not been open to us. We suspect that the equipment is not missing. And they are being hidden for some or wholesome agenda. Because anytime we talk about it, they say the suspects have been arrested. And that's all. Were the suspects arrested and the exhibits found on them, or we still don't know the whereabouts of the equipment and that the suspects are being held responsible for being the, the work dogs. We don't have any information about it. And we are going into election. And the same equipment is going to be used in the uh, election ahead of us. So we want transparency about that. Because of that, we have our confidence in the IT systems at the Electoral Commission has been shaken. And we have a history in 2012 where our colleagues from MPP found it necessary to compel the state and our uh, development partners to field an external consultant to actually investigate the whole IT setup of the Electoral Commission and brought out recommendations for implementation before the election took place. Our friends from UNDP, I'm sure you will get the evidence on your files that that project was financed by the UNDP. I think we can look at that one so that to put our hearts at rest that nothing untoward is happening in the face of missing equipment and the type of things that are happening, discrepancies between registration figures and all that. We must ensure and assure our supporters that nothing fishy is happening there. Because we know that the last commissioner that was appointed, Mr. Apiahene, was a regional election director of the NPP before his appointment. So we wrote to produce evidence of his activities, his appointments, and all that, presented them that a full member of MPP cannot be a referee in these elections. We presented evidence. They were ignored. He is still there. And consultants have been engaged 
to support the electoral commission on our blind side because procurement of consultancy services is a public procurement activity. We are not aware that any such procurement had gone through the procurement procedures for everybody to know that these consultants actually mean well and they are the non-partisan type of consultants that are helping the electoral commission with their IT systems. And we want, point number five, the president to declare openly on a state platform, not on his political party platform, that he will respect the will of the people as expressed by the outcome of the 2024 uh, December election results. When the president himself that's an open declaration. I'm sure it will bring to rest, it will put to rest all the noise that is happening around us about their refusal or unpreparedness to hand over power, even if we, uh, they lose the elections. The voice of the leader counts so that you rein in all these uh, 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 functionaries and appointees that we are all working according to the will of the people. Then finally, before any such document, peace pact is submitted to us for signature. We want to see the IGP signing to that document. We want to see the Chief Justice signing to that document. We want to see the Attorney General signing to that document. And we want to see the National Security Coordinator signing to that document. If all of them sign, and the monitoring group commits itself to the policy of naming and shaming publicly anybody who reneges on his obligation as far as implementation of the electoral laws of this country are concerned. We think that we will have the way forward. Thank you very much. And that there is John Singh Asir in Kitia. He is a national chairman of the NDC, uh, laying out the six conditions uh, based on which they will consider signing a peace pact. And as you may recall, it was last week when we broke that story, we broke that story on PM Express when he announced that the party will not be signing a peace pact this year. Now he's laid the conditions uh, that will get them to reconsider that position. They include a full implementation of the Awaso West Wagon Commission report, full prosecution of persons found culpable in the killing of the uh, Tichiman South voters in the last elections. The EC, it says, the missing biometric verification devices, they want full transparency there. Uh, the, he also talks about the president must declare openly that he will respect the will of the people at the end of the elections, but also, finally, that before any document is submitted to them to sign, it must first be signed by the IGP, the Chief Justice, the National Security Coordinator, the Attorney General, too, must all sign first. Thankfully, we can speak to George Amu. He's Executive Secretary of the National Peace Council. Uh, they went to see the NDC today in an attempt to get them to back down on that uh, declaration that was first made by the national chairman on PM Express last week. He joins me on the line right now. Thank you, sir, for your time here on Top Story. So you've heard the conditions. How are you approaching resolution as far as these six conditions are concerned? Uh, uh, Hello, Mr. Amu, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Uh, Ivan, yeah, yes. I can hear you. Great. The six conditions that the national chairman of the NDC laid before you today, how are you dealing with them? All right. Uh, thank you so much. I think it was, it was a good start. Uh, we are mediators. Uh, we, we have to appreciate the positions of uh, parties that uh, have, have issues uh, you know, before us. So uh, their position 
has been outlined in the six uh, points that you you, you, you you just you just mentioned. Uh, so we would we would have to negotiate them. Uh, that is how we started. I uh, will be with the MPP. Um, we, are, we are we are hoping that in the next few days we are going to engage uh, with the new Patriotic Party as well as other key actors in the in the in the field. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, we'll be able to uh, surmount uh, any challenges that we have. It is in our interest so to do, uh, to assure uh, not only uh, this, uh, this, this generation, but, you know, uh, those who will follow us, that this, we, we did the right thing uh, when it, 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 the, the matter uh, was, 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 was most, uh, you know, the matter was most needed. I think uh, we will rise up to the occasion. The board... And the committee that had been set up would, would look into uh, these issues and uh, respond to them uh, timely. So that your plan is to negotiate with the NDC around these six conditions? No, if I didn't get that list. Just clarifying, your plan is to negotiate with the NDC around these three uh, six conditions? Yes, you have to negotiate. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's a position that they have. They, they, they have they have given uh you know negotiation uh, means that you would have to discuss i mean uh, we may not be able to meet all the uh the, the, the requirements you know but if if the, the that is that's that's the essence of uh mediation. so yes because i, cause I asked that question so i can get clarity the objective yes. of the renegotiation is for them to consider dropping some of the conditions no, but if you go to a negotiation table or if you, if you espouse any position, unless it is court that you go to and the court will decide you win or you lose. But in, in a forum like that, that the Peace Council, the law allows us to operate, you would have to negotiate positions. And uh, that is what we are, are, are going to do. Uh, we, we are going to negotiate it. I mean, if, for example... You want um, you want us to condemn or do something? Yes, we will negotiate. What kind of approach that we should use? We must all agree, and it should not only be from one side. The other side must also, uh, uh, I mean, come on board so that we we all agree. You know, so in building consensus, you would have to give some, take some. And uh, we all reach a, a, a common position that we may not be totally happy, but we should accommodate that this one, uh, I went in for 10, I got five or I got six. I mean, that is how we negotiate. And I think we are going to do it exactly that. And you, you just heard there the national chairman start his address to you by saying they will not accept your proposal that they let bygones be bygones. I get the sense that they are not willing to negotiate around these six conditions, that this is non-negotiable? Oh, I, I, I didn't get that sense. Uh, you know, uh, the, 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 what do you call it? Um, Non-verbal communication is also very, very important. Uh, yes. So we, we, we were in the room. I think the people were there. I think that it is, it is, it is, it is likely that uh, positions will be shifted here and there for us to come to a compromise position. We have done that with NDC before. We have done that with other parties before. Uh, in, in respect of the, the NDC return uh, to the uh, Interparty Advisory Committee, uh, not all the conditions that they placed before us were met, but somehow uh, we, 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 we came to a consensus and uh, uh, they, 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 they are back, I mean, for the, for the good of our country. So let's hope and uh, we will do all that we can I'm sure the board will meet over this matter. And uh, uh, all of you, uh, in your questioning, let us help, you know, to shape the country that we all want ourselves. And when we do that, I, I'm very confident that we have reasonable leaders who, who mean well for our country, and we will get there. Do you, do, do you, though, accept that the six conditions that they've laid and the concerns that are inherent in them are legitimate? Oh, you know, it, I, 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 I would not grant that at all. I, I think they are. You see, uh, if you have a position, you see from a particular spectacle. 
And uh, uh, if we should if we should go to the MPP or any other political party, they may also have a position. So that is where they, you have to negotiate. You see, and I am very confident that uh, there are some of the issues that are doable. I mean, that 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 are uh, uh, the low hanging fruit. You can you can easily uh, deal with it. So, I mean, I don't want to mention any other, but there are some of them that we believe can be handled uh, within. Uh, I mean, within our reach, that can, the committee can handle easily. There are others that you have to take some pain, negotiate with others, uh, so that uh, we're able to come to a common ground where uh, all of us will win. Uh, and if we are all losing, then we all lose. But I think that we don't have to lose. We all have to win. I, mean, I think that we, 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 we are getting there. Today's event, is, I think, is good. Uh, if you are a mediator, if you are somebody who is in peace building, I think you would be happy uh, that and, and, and people uh, and, uh, are venting their, their, their grievances. It is a very good step, you know, uh, for, 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 for mediation to happen. And do you accept the criticism? And a lot of what we heard today from the, the national chairman of the NDC is based on their dissatisfaction with the way yourselves and others in that same space asking for peace parks to be signed have dealt with some of the issues they laid before you and that you have failed to pursue to the logical conclusion, for example, subjects around the killings we saw in the last elections in Tuchiman South, the failure of the government they pointed out to you to implement the uh, fully, the Yawaso West Wagon Commission report and others. They believe you've been silent on that and because of your silence, that's why they're now asking you to get these done before they consider resigning. You accept that criticism? Oh, uh, I think that <laughs> if if you if you just oppose, you know, those concerns against the mandate that the Peace Council has been given in in, in the Establishment Act, uh, then you can appreciate the the, the probably the, the challenges that the Peace Council uh, has to go through to get some of these things. Uh, done. Um, I think we also have to appreciate the institutional limitations and institutional arrangements we've done for ourselves. Uh, where should the Peace Council mandate begin and where should it end and where, when it ends, who, who takes over? For example, I think these things might be discussed very well. Uh, we, I think the idea I explained to you on, on your platform that the National Peace Council uh, has been to the, the, the five constituencies where the issues happen. We have been there on two occasions for each place. And I would love if your, 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 your reporters can go to any one of them and ask whether or not the Peace Council has been there. We have been there. And the tools we have to work is the, the, those ones I'm mentioning to you. Negotiation, mediation, you know, uh, we use our mouth. We use uh, to speak. As you use your pen and uh, your 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 uh, I mean other ways to, to 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 deliver your mandate. That is what we do, and that we have done very well. And we keep our regional office keep in touch with these areas. You can you can you can make the inquiry. So for us, I think we are doing something. And we think it's in the right direction. And very Thirdly, quickly, you've indicated that you'll be meeting with the MPP next. What about the president? Oh, the president, if it becomes necessary, why not? You know, because board, one of the conditions is that you, the president must openly, the public forum, not on the political platform, declare that he will accept the results. Well, but I, 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 I will not be glad, but I know my, the Minister for Interior, uh, Honorable Henry Kote, has said it not one, that the, 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 the government would accept the outcome of the 2024 election. My minister has said it, I think not once. I have heard him publicly saying this. If, if you go through the record, you, you, you will hear him say it. And, and, and he represents the president. So if he makes the commitment, I don't think that um, we, should, we, should, we should doubt it. Let us... Uh, I mean, this country... But, but is, it, but is the president the one to hear from? Are you sure somebody can say I won't handle that? I'm not sure that can happen now. Well, the M now. NDC is aware of that, but they still want the president to explicitly make that commitment publicly. Uh, uh, well, uh, so 
the 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 the, the committee uh, will look at it. The board uh, would, would have to look at that. And if uh, in in per the assessment that would come as a result of that meeting, uh, that 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 is crucial uh, for our democracy survival. I think uh, the board will not shy away from uh, from asking a meeting uh, with His Excellency the President. Thank you very much. That that there is uh, George Ramalu, the Executive Secretary of the National Peace Council. We'll be hearing from the NDC pretty shortly. I want to uh, also hear from you uh, a major, uh, you know, development in this uh, whole campaign by the Peace Council and others to get the NDC to sign a peace pact ahead of the December 7 elections. What are your thoughts? You've heard the six conditions uh, that has now been spelled out by the national chairman of the NDC uh, for signing that peace pact. Uh, this is new Snight, still ahead. Let's speak to uh, Dr. Peter Boamotokuno, who joins us right now. He's a, a member of the 2024 Manifesto Committee of the party. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Tokuno, for your time here on News Night. Um, I believe you heard George Amo, who is Executive Secretary of the National Peace Council. They've had you. They believe your concerns are legitimate. The conditions are legitimate, but they want to negotiate. Uh, is there room for negotiations around these six conditions? Well, uh, first of all, I think that this, there's no game saying that if there is no justice, you can get peace. And I always make the point that peace is a product. And it's a product that is produced or generated from certain actions, which includes trust. And when you don't engender trust, you cannot even lead peace in the first place. And I feel a little bit worried the tone and the narrative that uh, George Amon was trying to present. We have made these demands advisedly. And mind you, this is not the first time. I recall before we participated in the Peace Pact in 2020, we were making the demands that what has engulfed our electoral processes we call electoral violence. And the fact that political actors do not deal with people who perpetrate this violence is actually a function of certain institutions of state which is the Ghana police, the attorney general, the judiciary, and so on and so forth. And so when you want to do a peace pact and you ask MPP and NBC to come and sit down and sign peace pact, it is completely meaningless because between MPP and NBC, one is in power. And whilst in power, one controls the police, one controls the attorney general. And if the attorney general decides that he's not going to prosecute anything, you have signed a pact with party, but the government is different. Well, uh, John so we demanded today. in 2020 that as part of the peace pact, all these institutions of state participate in the pact, and they refused. Well, it went back and forth, and to some extent, we, we had to agree and we signed. And so there was negotiation at the time, and we agreed and signed. Then fast forward. See what happened in 2020. Eight people were killed. There was widespread violence, widespread irregularities. The Electoral Commission declared the elections almost 10 times. There was total confusion. Now, what we are saying now is that from the experiences of 2020 and even beyond before 2020, signing of peace pact in itself does not yield peace in the elections. Signing of peace pact does not solve the fundamental problem of electoral violence and its prevention. And if you want prosecution of those who perpetuate the electoral violence. And so this time around, for us to be able to sign any peace pact, we must see clear indications that there is a clear commitment, genuine commitment from the state, from the actors, from the stakeholders to have an outcome that is acceptable by all. Yeah, uh, Dr. Buama uh, Otokuno, uh, quickly though on the subject. So will you or will you not accept to negotiate around these six conditions? Well, it then, what it means is that one may have to define the terms of the negotiation and what we are negotiating about. Because the demand that we have put across simply is demanding the implementation of a commission support. I was always one on commission report, a commission that was set up by the president, too much to ask, to ask the president to implement the report of his own commission that he set up. Is it too much to ask for justice for the families of the eight people that lost their lives in the election? I have been asking the Ghana police every single time we have an encounter with them. 
what has happened to the investigation. And they will tell you, oh, we'll come back to you, we'll come back to you. And for eight years, nothing has happened from the investigation. I will say the bullets that flew all over the place, which we saw on TV, military men shooting, came from space, and nobody shot those bullets. We want justice in those matters. We want people who, who got the one million ballot papers to be printed, to be prosecuted. I think this is fair to ask. So you're not, so you're not ready fair. to negotiate is it not on fair, them? Evans, is it not fair to ask for audit of the DV House of the Electoral Commission? Well, you've you, you made the point. You've made the point. You believe, of course, the Peace Council themselves say they are legitimate. Uh, but they will still want some concessions around this as they uh, meet the MPP as well. Uh, they will also consider meeting the president if it's uh, necessary to do so. Uh, in, in negotiations, though, they believe you must be prepared to concede something. And it is, a, it is an exchange of you give up something to gain something in return. Is the NDC, and you were in the room, you understand the mood among the party. Are you in the mood to entertain a negotiation? Evans, which one do we concede on? Out of the six demands that we have made. So non-negotiable then? All six non-negotiable. Evans, let me, let me make some credit for you to see the picture clearly. Do we concede on justice for the eight people that lost do we concede on the presentation of our West Wago report? Do we concede on auditing the IT systems of the Electoral Commission? And do we concede that the president should declare that you have set the results? Or you want us to concede that all these state institutions who are key stakeholders in bringing justice to play in our elections are even in signing the peace pact? Tell us which one we should concede. <laughs> and, and, and perhaps that may be a step forward. Uh, and and uh, on, issues on that, that subject, and important on, on that subject, though, people. we heard George Amu say that the Interior Minister has openly declared the stance of government on the subject of whether they respect the outcome after December 7 or not, and that they are committed to it. Uh, if you're not taking his word for it, today the President was speaking publicly at a function uh, in front of the organized labor, and this is what he said on that. As we approach the electoral electioneering season, I want to assure you that Ghana will emerge peaceful and more united after the 7th December elections. However, we must not allow complacency to set in, given the insecurity within West Africa. We have a duty to partner with and support our security and intelligence agencies to prevent any threats to the peace we enjoy. We must work diligently to secure our borders and maintain peace and security during this critical period. I have been and will always be for peace. And I encourage all citizens and organizations to do the same by rejecting the threats of misinformation and disinformation. I will help ensure the conduct of free, fair, and credible and transparent elections. It is the will of the Ghanaian people, freely expressed, and not the will of any candidate or political party, however desperate for power, that will prevail. The, the integrity of our electoral process is paramount, and we will take all necessary steps to secure it. The law against vigilantism will be strictly applied without fear or favor. And uh, Dr. Peter Bomotokono, that is the president there today. That is your fifth demand today. Does that meet the criteria you said today for him? Publicly Evans, declaring that he will, he will accept the outcome. Evans, I didn't hear the president uh, say that he will accept the outcome. Uh, and that is what we are demanding. Let, we let, are let, demanding. The, 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 the I said, the the said to quote him. I said, I said to quote him that the president must declare openly that he will respect the will of the people. The president says it is the will of the people that will prevail, not any political party, not even his. Evans, Evans, you see, what the president said for everybody who understands and reads and understands English is not the same as what we are demanding. We are demanding the case where the president would say that he will respect the will of the people and hand over power when, he, when his party loses. And that's what we have not heard from the, 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 the president. The president was just making the point that he will not, he will, for this with the security services, 
to make sure that the elections are done free and fair. That's why he has said. But he but also says the will of the people over will power, Committing to accept the results is a completely different thing. Like President Muhammad did in 2016. Like President Rollins did in 2000. Like President Kufuor did in 2008. President Akufuadu has never said that. And, 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 and just oppose that with the fact that his cabinet minister repeatedly has made public pronouncements that they will not hand over to any political party. Then you tell me that the interior minister, who is a colleague of the, the, the minister of Agric, is saying that they will accept the results, so we should accept that. How can we accept the pronouncement of the minister of interior when the president is there? Or, oh, Ivan, did you see uh, a recording sworn with the sword at the Independence Square as a president? We have a president, and it is only the president who has over power, not interior minister. Mm. The demanding is that we want the interior minister, the, the president, to declare that he will respect the mandate of the people and have over political power. Okay. Uh, Dr. Peter Lebon, I'll talk about that. Uh, he is a member of the 2024 Manifesto Committee. Uh, listen, I want to hear from you. You've heard the president. Uh, you've heard from Dr. Peter Obama. You've heard from the national chairman of the NDC themselves. And you've heard from George Amu, who's executive secretary of the National Peace Council. Uh, give me your own verdict. 055